Fuzzy TV. I told you, didn't I? I've told you many times this operation is held together by super glue and duct tape. And there's the duct tape right there on the end of my earphone wire. It's shredded. I need to get another one. But in the meantime, duct tape works well. Yeah, this is black duct tape. It works the same. It works the same. This is Martin Zender. Welcome to the end of the week. I told you today, because you did remind me, thank you for that, that I was going to get into Romans chapter 8, verses 21 through 8, no, verses 18 through 25. And I was going to do it, and I am going to do it via the J.B. Phillips paraphrase. Now, I don't generally like paraphrases because I'm a literal guy. I want to know what God actually said. But sometimes, if the paraphrase does not compromise the truth, I first checked that, you see. If, if you notice, I used the message, Eugene Peterson's The Message, which is in most cases, I mean, it's a terrible translation. It's not a translation. It's a, it's a paraphrase. But I use it in the first idiot in heaven when I need to be colloquial, when I really need to get a point across simply. We all know that the concordant version can be a bit complex, a bit complicated. Paul, not a man of... Um, succinctness <laughs> not a man who <clears throat> believes much in punctuation so if i found out what i did was i checked the verse in the concordant literal and then i checked it in the message and if it was not disagreeing in other words if it was on the same page literally with meaning the literal meaning then i just used the message because i loved the common language of it all. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to read Romans chapter 8, 18 through 25 from the Concordant Literal New Testament. Then I'm going to read it from J.B. Phillips' paraphrase. I've used, I used J.B. Phillips back in the 80s. I think I first got one in 85. 80, yeah, probably 85 I got a J.B. Phillips. I had 22 Bible translations back in 1985. I was hungry to get all the different versions I could. I had some crazy versions you probably never heard of. But anyway, I enjoyed, I enjoyed that. The Arthur S. Way translation was also a nice little, yeah, I guess it was more of a paraphrase. I'm interested in Romans 8. I like it because it describes our current condition. We've been talking about trials and suffering and how they're temporary. And this speaks to that. I launched on this because of Romans 8.18. Remember yesterday I told you I had a hot verse? Yeah. So we're going to go to Concordant Literal. Then I'm going to go to J.B. Phillips, and we're going to see this thing just flower, just blossom. And then I got a couple of friends here. Believe it or not, you don't know that yet, but they're here, Mike and Doug, and they're going to talk to you about their experiences with this groaning, you know, all creation groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. So lots of treats for you here at the end of the week. Romans 8, verse 18. For I am reckoning that the sufferings of the current era do not deserve the glory about to be revealed for us. Here's new territory now from yesterday. Verse 19. For the premonition of the creation, that is a, a foreboding, a pre-feeling, the premonition of the creation is awaiting the unveiling of the sons of God. Interesting thing here is Paul says the creation the premonition of the creation. So I have always included animals in this. We know that animals have a sixth sense. Your dog can tell when a storm's coming before you can. Dogs can, animals can detect like presences, good and bad. We know that Balaam's ass was aware of the angels on the road ahead where Balaam wasn't. So who's the real ass here? Back in that day, it was a miracle for an ass to speak, and that's what happened in that account. Balaam's ass turned around and saying, what are you doing? Have I ever done this to you? There's angels in the road. Right, so, so, again, it was a miracle for an ass to speak back in those days. Today, it's a miracle if one shuts up. So here we go, 19. So all creation, uh, and I like this. I include animals in this. The premonition of the creation is awaiting the unveiling of the sons of God. They might not even realize that they're awaiting that specific thing, but they might. It says they do, so I take that back. 
For to vanity was the creation subjected, I noticed, not willingly, not voluntarily, concordant, I noticed that too, but because of him who subjects it. Oh, God did this? Yes. Why? In expectation that the creation itself also shall be freed from the slavery of corruption. A fine definition of beyond three. Into the glorious freedom of the children of God. Yeah, that's all creation. The same creation that is groaning is a creation that is going to be freed from the slavery to, to corruption. Your pets are right along with you in the slavery to corruption. Yeah, we're all in it together. For we are aware that the entire creation is groaning and travailing together until now. I, I groan every day. I told you that. I've just... The spirit groans. Even the spirit groans with inarticulate groanings. Yeah, that's down there in verse uh, 26. The spirit itself is pleading for us with inarticulate groanings. Even the spirit of God is groaning. My God, it's a groan fest down here. Yet not only so, but we ourselves also, who have the first fruit of the Spirit, we're the key to the deliverance of the rest of creation. We who have the first fruit of the Spirit, we ourselves are also groaning in ourselves, awaiting the sonship, the deliverance of our body. That's what we're waiting for. For to expectation were we saved. Now expectation being observed is not expectation. For what anyone is observing, why is he expecting it also? Now, if we are expecting what we are not observing, we are awaiting it with endurance. Comes back to faith, not observing it. But faith tells us that it's real and it's coming to a theater near you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, a J.B. Phillips. Love this. The section title, every section has a, it's uninspired, of course, but I like this. J.B. Phillips says, present distress is temporary and negligible, negligible. Present distress is temporary and negligible. I told you this yesterday. The concordant uh, says that, what verse did we look at yesterday? It told us that our trials were light and momentary. The lightness of our affliction. And Paul called them momentary. Light and momentary. This is right along the lines, the lines of that. Present distress is temporary and negligible. J.B. Phillips, starting with verse 18, In my opinion, whatever we may have to go through now is less than nothing compared with the magnificent future God has planned for us. This is beautiful. I'll try to shut up and just read this. I have to start again, though, because I want to hear it again. In my opinion, whatever we may have to go through now is less than nothing compared with the magnificent future God has planned for us. The whole creation is on tiptoe to see the wonderful sight of the sons of God coming into their own. The world of creation cannot as yet see reality, not because it chooses to be blind, but because in God's purpose it has been so limited. Yet it has been given hope. And the hope, concordance says expectation. And the expectation is that in the end, the whole of created life will be rescued from the tyranny of change and decay. Oh, rescued from the tyranny of change. I hate change. Decay. Not too crazy about that either, but we're going to be rescued from it. In the end, the whole of created life, and we have this promise in Colossians 1, verse 20, those things on the heaven and those things on the earth will be reconciled to God through the blood of Christ's cross. In the end, the whole of created life will be rescued from the tyranny of change and decay and have its share in that magnificent liberty which can only belong to the children of God. That's us. Here's verse 22 through 25, J.B. Phillips, Romans 8. It is plain to anyone with eyes to see that at the present time all created life groans in a sort of universal travail. And it is plain too that we who have a foretaste of the Spirit are in a state of painful tension while we wait for that redemption of our bodies, which will mean that at last we have realized our full sonship in Him. We are saved by this expectation, but in our moments of impatience, let us remember that expectation always means waiting for something that we haven't yet got. 
But if we hope for something we cannot see, if we expect something we cannot see, then we must settle down to wait for it in patience. That is beautiful. Rewind this and play that again and again. All right, I told you I had a special treat for you, and I do. Um, I said I had two friends, Mike and Doug. Uh, the first one I'd like to introduce to you is Mike. Hey, Mike, come on up here. Hey, man, what's up? What's up, dude? Uh, well, I just read Romans chapter 8, and uh, I want to know if you are agreeing with that. You Did you hear that? Did you hear what I said about it? Yeah, how can I not hear it? All you do is sit in here in front of this microphone and talk all day. Well, if you don't mind, I just want to know if you've grown. Oh, yeah, i grown. I, I would call call it more of a universal travail, maybe. Yeah, but i grown. Yeah, I'm a freaking monkey. What do you think I do? All right, well, can you give us an example of the groan? One, yeah, just tell us how you groan. Oh, uh, okay, all right, I'm going to try it. You're brave. Yeah, I know. Okay, here we go. No, wait, that wasn't it. You're kidding, right? Hey, look, kid, you want a groan? I'm going to give you a groan. I'll give you what I got, all right? All right. You call that a groan? Hey, look, kid, you wanted a groan. I gave you a groan. That's how I do it. All right, come on. I'm not getting paid here. You get what you pay for, kid. You get what you pay for. So, do you have a premonition that, like, I'm the key to your deliverance? Well, this is kind of embarrassing to admit, but yes, I do. For some reason. Like, you know how I can tell a storm's coming ahead of time, right? Yeah, you're good at that. Yeah, well, I also have a feeling, and I hate to admit it, but you're the key to my deliverance. As soon as God delivers you... Then the rest of the creation's coming through. All right, that's fine. I got to get Doug in here, but... Uh, oh, you got to be kidding. That guy's here. Yeah. But can you give us that groan one more time? Why should I? You criticized it the first time. You want me to subject myself to that again? If you wouldn't mind. All right, here we go. Here we go. Up, up, up. No, wait. That, that, that wasn't it. All right, try that's it. That's it. Here we go. One more time. Is that all right? It is what it is. Now, uh, we have our mutual friend, Doug. Doug, you can come up now. Hey, man. What's going on? Uh, did you hear my conversation with Mike? Uh, yeah. I heard it, unfortunately. It was terrible, but anyway. Um, I have a favor to ask of you. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, I got a favor to ask of you, too. What's that? Uh, what's this tag still doing on me? You see it? Wait. I still, hey, hey, there, there it is, there it is, there it is, dang, dang. Why is that tag still on me? What are you going to do? Send me back to Amazon.com? No, I wouldn't do that. Oh, well, yeah, I wouldn't put it past you, kid. I wouldn't put it past you, kid. All right, can you um give me an assessment of how you feel about the world? Uh, well, what do you think? It's Eon 3. That sucks. Yeah, do you, I mean, do you have any instinct about it? Oh, you're getting kind of personal there, Zender. Well, anyway, do you? Well, yeah. Well, yeah, I gotta admit, I do. Yeah, yeah. Are you by any chance, uh... Groaning? Yeah, are you groaning? That's it. Yeah, of course I groan. Would you do one for me? I just, I just really dying to hear it. 
How much do I get paid? I ain't gonna groan for you for nothing. Uh, you're not getting paid, okay? You're doing this as a favor. All right. I thought. One now. One groan's all you get out of me. One. One. And then you're gonna take this tag off. Yeah, that's it. That's the deal. If you groan, I'll take the tag off. All right. All right. Here we go. Aren't you going to say anything? That was your groan? Yeah, that was my groan. Hey, this is a personal thing. If you don't like it, it's not my fault. Can you do it again? <laughs> all right. One more groan for you, kid. One more, and that's all you're getting out of me. Fair enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. On three. You got the camera on? Yeah. Microphone on? Yeah. All right, here we go. Aren't you going to say anything? People will be contacting your people. This has been Doug and <laughs> Mike and Martin Zender signing off from the edge of the the bottom. Yeah, the edge of the bottom of the Florida Peninsula.